Good evening. Welcome to the environmental scoping meeting for the Doheny Village Zoning Code Update. My name is Belinda Dinas, Principal Planner for the City of Dana Point. I'm joined by Eddie Torres, the City's Environmental Review Consultant with Michael Baker International. Pursuant to Executive Order N-29-20 issued by Governor Newsom, this public scoping meeting currently taking place in the City Council Chambers is not open to the public to ensure the health and safety of the public by limiting human contact that could spread the COVID-19 virus. Please note that this meeting will be made available for future viewing on the City of Dana Point's YouTube page. Members of the public were encouraged to participate in this meeting electronically by submitting any comments or questions and request to speak via email by 4 o'clock p.m. today, one hour prior to the start of this meeting. This meeting will consist of a presentation by the city's consultant, followed by a comment period and response to comments. With that, I would like to welcome Mr. Eddie Torres to provide an overview of the project's environmental review process. Thank you for uh, letting me be here, and I'm pleased to provide the discussion for the environmental scoping meeting. Uh, could we have the next slide, please? Thanks. So we're here tonight for the environmental impact report scoping meeting, and the overall purpose of the scoping meeting will discuss an overview of the project, the environmental review process, the EIR topics that will be addressed, and we'll consider public input. So overall, the purpose of the scope meeting is to inform the public of the project and the city's intent to adopt a programmatic EIR, present the overview of the environmental review process, provide the review of the topics that we'll be addressing in the EIR, and receive public comments. Displayed in front of you is a project area. You can see the project area is bounded by the yellow line, and we have the I-5 to the north and west and PCH to the south. This project has a long and colorful history, starting back in 2011 when the city developed the Doheny Village Plan, and that was using a form-based code. After that, the environmental review process started, and the public scope meeting was held. Numerous comments were received by the community. After that, the city reinitiated the public review engagement process with the public and continued that public input process with the Doheny Village Working Group with a monthly um, meeting to develop the zoning code update. The overall project overview I'll hand over to city staff. So the purpose of this zoning code update is to preserve and enhance the eclectic combination of light industrial, commercial, and residential uses in Doheny Village. This update allows for greater flexibility of um, property owners to expand, improve, and maintain existing non-conforming structures and uses in the village. And it's important to note that a majority of the structures that exist today were built under County of Orange jurisdiction and are more than 45 years of age. Based on the historical pattern of development, this um, next page shows the direct draft zoning map and includes uh, new zoning districts. Some of the key land use changes include legalizing existing light industrial uses on the west side in purple, residential on uh, on upper floors on properties fronting Doheny Park Road in red, and horizontal mixed use, meaning commercial or residential, on the east side in brown. The update on the land use map uh, includes proposed changes to floor area ratio intensity for commercial and industrial uses and residential density to bring existing properties into conformance with the city's general plan and the city's zoning ordinance. After several decades of challenging land use and development standards currently in place, these proposed land use changes will likely spur both small and large scale redevelopment in the village. Thank you. So with this, the project's gonna require several entitlements, which will include a zoning code amendment, general plan amendment, local coastal program amendment, and a certification of the program EIR. So the purpose of the CEQA is really to inform the public of the project and its potential impacts, to disclose the baseline environmental conditions, to disclose the regulatory framework, to identify potential impacts and looking at ways to mitigate those to the extent feasible, and also to foster interagency coordination with the review of the project and its potential impacts. 
As you can see before you, there are several venues for comment into the process, and we are all the way to the left of this graphic with the notice of preparation, where we received your input through the scoping meeting and through the comment letters for the um, NOP. After that, we take that input and draft the environmental impact report, and that looks at, as I mentioned, various environmental topics, which I'll address later. That gets sent out for a 45-day public review period where we receive comments. At that point, we take all the comments and respond to them in writing and resubmit them to the commenting parties. That's included within the final environmental impact report. That report consists of the draft EIR, the response to comments, any changes or modifications that were made to the document, which are called an errata, and a mitigation monitoring program. With that, the city takes it into consideration with findings and a resolution of considerations. As you can see, we're going to be addressing various topics in the EIR, and these will look at potential short-term and long-term impacts of the project, as well as impacts associated with cumulative development in the area and surrounding communities. Land use, aesthetics, tribal consultation resources and cultural resources, geotechnical, hydrology and water quality, hazards and hazardous materials, traffic, air quality, energy, greenhouse gas effects, population and housing, and as I mentioned, we'll be addressing cumulative impacts and we'll be looking at alternatives to reduce any potential impacts. So here's the schedule where we're at. And initially, the public review period for the notice of preparation was slated to close earlier than this, but with the COVID-19 situation, we've extended the commenting time that parties have until May 28th. We'll take all that consideration into the draft EIR, which is tentatively scheduled to be released for public review in the fall. Planning Commission consideration will occur in the winter and spring 2021 for the Coastal Commission review. With that, as I mentioned, we have the public comment team period that's been extended to May 28th at 5 p.m. And we'd appreciate your comments being sent to Bill and Den in a written fashion. Uh, email is the best way right now with the COVID-19 situation. And we'll take those into consideration when we draft the EIR. Great, thank you, Eddie. Next, I will open the meeting for public comment. During the notice of preparation period beginning on March 13th, city staff received comment letters from the following agencies. South Coast, Water, South Coast Air Quality Management District, Caltrans District 12, Orange County Transportation Authority, California Department of Fish and Wildlife, One Annual Band of Mission Indians, City of San Juan Capistrano, and OC Parks. These comment letters have been posted on the city's website under environmental documents. Comment letters received from the public, I will read into the record. From Keith Yannis, Dana Point Historical Society. As chair of the Dana Point Historical Society Preservation Committee, I'm responding to the notice of preparation of the EIR, reissued May 7, 2020 by the city of Dana Point. These comments are for the proposed Doheny Village Zoning District update project. With regard to the scope and con content of the EIR review, please review the historic nature of the main roadway through this project. This is one of the most historic roadways in local and California history. Going back more than 250 years, this roadway was the route of the Portola expedition and therefore becoming the historic El Camino, El Camino Real used during the mission period and celebrated as El Camino Real. With the signature bells as California began developing highways as cars and became the mode of transportation. Next, as highways developed and improved, it became the historic US 101 and the midpoint between Los Angeles and San Diego, with businesses developing in this community responding to the motorist needs and comforts. Any development in this area must be concerned with honoring this history. A Dana Point Park, a short distance from here, has a monument to PCH and California Highway 1. The history of this roadway must be acknowledged and highlighted as we believe it is possibly more significant and important to our city's history. Was there one of the El Camino Real iconic bells here? In summary, Tall buildings 50 foot high anywhere along this roadway is not only unacceptable, it would ruin the historic character of this historic roadway. What would be the historic building height? There are already some examples in the, the area. 
Another point nearby is another part of the same linear park honoring watermen and women and legends. Some of the activities and work that made some of these individuals legends took place in Doheny Village. These sites connecting to these Dana Point treasures need to be identified, evaluated, acknowledged, and honored in places that they made their contributions. We cannot lose this history. The Dana Point Historical Society also recommends that the city of Dana Point connect with the Main Street America and the California Main Street programs to get the best practices and research that show how historic preservation leads to better and faster economic development. The California Preservation Foundation Conference just had a session that released this data. Thank you for your consideration. Keith Joannis. Next is a comment letter from Tony Nelson, Capo Cares. Thank you for the opportunity to comment on this exciting project. I commend the hard work undertaken by city staff and the Doheny Village Working Group and have a number of comments that I've submitted to Belinda Dynas as a separate document. The draft Doheny Village District Overlay states that, in, that the intent and purpose of the rezoning is to preserve and enhance the eclectic combination of commercial, light industrial, and residential mixed uses in the area, end quote. While Capo Beach residents have long lobbied for a revitalization of Doheny Village, we recognize that any rezoning must be sensitive to the, quote, soul of this special part of our community. It is vital that the large, tall buildings allowed by the new development do not obliterate what has already been at the heart a quote, village. While I understand the intent in renaming this area Capistrano Beach Village in recognition of the fact that it is a very important part of Capistrano Beach, 92624, I'm hoping the Doheny Village name can be preserved. Doheny Village harkens back to our historic roots and the importance of Ned Doheny who first developed Cap Castrano Beach. Doheny Beach, our famous Doheny Park Road, our beautiful 1920s historic homes and many of our longtime village businesses proudly bear this name. I hope it sticks. Doheny Village is a very special area, one that has important significance as the site of the historic El Camino Real, early Highway 101, and the 19 1890s railroad stop on Victoria Street marked as San Juan back when we were known as San Juan by the Sea. The village has great significance to Dana Point surfing heritage and is still home to famous surfing icons, metal and other industrial workers and talented artists and designers. I would love to see an, a historic preservation guideline incorporated into the plan. I have forwarded specific suggestions on historic preservation plus some environmental and aesthetic concerns to Belinda and I am hopeful that these will be considered. It is exciting to see Doheny Village on the road to revitalization at, revitalization at last. I look forward to the changes that will significantly modernize and enhance this area while preserving its importance as a vital part of both the community of Capistrano Beach and the larger, larger city of Dana Point. The final letter is from Doug Lowe of Beach City's Glass. My concern for the environment is paramount. Based on what I remember about the extensive study of the area that the city paid about $900,000 for years ago, I believe the one item that will impact the environment the most significantly is vehicle traffic through the valley. From the presentation of the study and from my personal experience of using the same size traffic circle in San Juan Capistrano at Valley Road and Lenovia, I support the recommendation from the study that includes, among other ideas, a traffic circle at the intersection of Victoria Boulevard and Doheny Park Road. I'm acutely aware that my opinion on this is shared by only a small minority of stakeholders, but historically that has always been the case in the di discussion of environment versus development. So this letter is intended to change that paradigm from one of quote, what is the least that we can do to maintain the environment, end quote, to an approach that asks the question, quote, what is the best possible thing we can do to improve the environment, end quote, so that 50 years from now, we will be best served by our investment. Obviously, it will be more expensive to improve the environment versus maintaining the status quo. Besides the additional money we will spend, we as a society will have to adapt to new ways. Slowing down is one of 
the things we must do, in my honest opinion. According to our study, from the best of my memory, a single lane traffic circle, one allows the same amount of traffic to traverse the valley and that the existing two lanes now carry in about the same amount of time. Two reduces average speed to two, 20 miles per hour versus 45 miles per hour now. This will A, reduce accident rates and severity, B, reduce noise pollution, C, reduce fuel consumption, D, reduce air pollution from brake and tire dust, and E, reduce air pollution from fuel consumption. I believe these are exactly the mandates required when the Environmental Protection Act was created, the very reason the EIR is required when development is considered. While I am perfectly ready to concede that my memory may be flawed, that the study may not have been thorough, and that new information may contradict the old study, these possibilities in no way excuse us from carefully considering and thoroughly understanding and adapting to the best possible option when it comes to critically important issue of our environment and the significant effect vehicle traffic has on it. I thank everyone that is participating in this study for their efforts to improve the lives through thoughtful and sens sensible development. Sincerely, Doug Lowe. City staff did not receive any requests to speak via telephone. Therefore, I will go ahead and close the public comments. Eddie, would you like to respond to any of those comments? We'll be addressing each of those within the environmental impact report. Those will be included in a summary within the introduction of the EIR and a specific citation to where the analysis for those effects can be found. Great, thank you. So before we conclude, I'd like to uh, remind everyone that if you would like to provide additional written comments um, regarding the preparation of this environmental review, please send written comments to me directly via email at bdeines at danapoint.org by no later than close of business on Thursday, May 28th. This concludes the environmental scoping meeting for the Zohini Village Zoning Code update. Thank you for viewing and participating.